A very good afternoon to all. It is immense pleasure to welcome A very good afternoon to all. It is immense pleasure to welcome one and all gathered for the wonderful occasion webinar on Pazicides versus Cripsicides organized by Department of Mathematics, RSO Engineering College. For this wonderful occasion, I welcome management dignitaries, respected principal sir, vice principal madam, and dean of academics sir. I welcome the resource person, Dr. R. Irene Kepsuba, assistant professor of mathematics, CPML College, Korea. And I welcome all the participants for this webinar. I wish all the participants to have a great day. Now, I request our Dean of Academics, sir, Dr. M. Rukmangadan, to say few words about this webinar. Welcome, sir. Hello. Kanan? Yes, sir. Whether my voice is audible, Kanan? Yes, yes sir. I'm audible, sir. You may. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Good afternoon to all. <clears throat> I am Dr. Rukmangadan, Dean of Academics, Aras Engineering College, Kumbakonam. Our institution was started with three undergraduate UG programs during the year 2001. <clears throat> From the first day onwards, we are offering outcome-based education to the rural background students. Uh, we, our staff members are working very hard in the team effort manner. Now we are having and offering eight undergraduate programs and four postgraduate programs. <clears throat> with the cooperation of staff members, we have achieved a lot in our institution. I would like to mention something for that. Under the recognition part, University Grants Commission has recognized our institution with the 2F and the 12B status. National Board of Aggregation has aggregated our institution for about three undergraduate programs. National Assessment and Aggregation Council have aggregated our institution with the B double plus grade. <clears throat> our institution is frequently organizing series of webinars during this lockdown period. Today, I'm so happy because Department of Mathematics is organizing a webinar on fuzzy sets versus crisp sets by having the resource person, our friend, Dr. Irene Hepsiba from DBML College, Purayar. <clears throat> on the behalf of the management principal and on my personal ground, I wholeheartedly welcome Irene Hepsiba, ma'am, to this webinar. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Uh, I assure that uh, our resource person, R. Irene Hepsiba from TBML College Purayar, is the versatile person to deal with the fuzzy sets in our state. <clears throat> in this regard, I congratulate the head of the Department of Mathematics, staff members, and participants to have this webinar in a successful manner. My best wishes to all the participants. I assure that participants will gather some concepts regarding fuzzy sets in the, the useful manner today. My best wishes to all. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I am very happy to introduce our chief guest, Dr. I R. Irene Gerziba. He is presently working as an assistant professor of mathematics at TBML College, Poriyar which is one of the premier institutions in the Bardas University, Trichavali. She graduated and post-graduated from TPML College, Poriyar, and got 11th and 5th rank in Bardas University. She has completed her MPhil degree at the AVC College, Autonomous Mailad Gurai. She began her career in 1997 as a lecturer in the field of mathematical science at the EGS Pillai Engineering College, Nagapattinam. She then began her mathematical research and was conferred Doctor of Honours in 2011 by Mother Teresa Women University, Kodakyanal, for her thesis on an algorithmic approach to fuzzy linear and linear complementary problem. Till date, she has authored nearly eight, 80 research papers. 60 have been published in various mathematical journals of national and international reboot, and 20 have been presented and published in national and international conference proceeding. 
She serves as editorial board member, reviewer in many international journals, which include International Journal of Scientific Engineering and Research, International Annal of Fuzzy Mathematics and Informatics, International Journal of Neuroaesthetic Science and Springer Plus Journals. She is a life member of IST, New Delhi, and Kerala Mathematical Society. She organized many national conferences, seminars, symposium, and workshops for the benefit of faculty and students. She acted as a user person in many conference seminars, workshops at a national and international level, and chaired technical session in national and international conference. Under her guidance, two PhD scholars successfully completed their PhD degree in presently. Four PhD scholars are pursuing research. The topic of research guidance include fuzzy optimization, fuzzy probability, and fuzzy matrices. She is the recipient of National Merit Scholarship by Government of India and received many prizes and awards for her academic excellence. Now I request session hand over to the research person of Dr. R. Irene Hepsiba. Thank you, ma'am. Good afternoon. Thank you, Tamil, for your nice introduction. And I also thank, thank you, Dr. Rukmodagan for giving me an opportunity to present my lecture. Uh, today, we are going to talk about fuzzy sets versus crisp sets. Fuzzy sets, uh, fuzzy, first I wish to tell you what is meant by fuzzy logic. It is a method dealing with imprecise data and uncertainty with problems that have many answers rather than one. It is more like human reasoning and thinking. Instead of simply true or false, we have mostly true or mostly false or more true or more false. Traditional or crisp logic in 3000 BC, Aristotle formulated the law of excluded middle, which is now the principal foundation of mathematics. Here, X must be in a set of A or in a set of not A. Logic is a part of the human capacity to reason. Mathematical logic is also called classical logic. It considers the binary logic, which consists of truth one or false zero. Traditional or crisp logic, let us see this example to explain the concept of fuzzy logic and ordinary mathematical logic. Uh, here, a rose is either red or not red. I'm going to talk about a rose is red or not red. In the first figure, you see the rose is red. But these two roses are one is yellow and another one is white. So we say this rose is red and this is not red. What about this particular rose? Is it red or white or yellow? We couldn't come to any conclusion. Here, imprecise, the data is imprecise in nature. Let us see some other example for fuzzy information. That is, what color is this leopard? Can we give any single color for this particular leopard? We can't do that. Next, we just study the heights of the people. Where do tall, tall people start? Who is the tallest guy here? We may have some confusion. So fuzzy logic is a superset of conventional or Boolean logic that has been extended to handle the concept of partial truth, that is truth values between completely true and completely false. The truth values are all values in the interval 0, 1. Suppose that the value is false, we simply take 0. Suppose the value is truth value is false, a true, we take the value 1. In the case of ordinary mathematical logic or crisp logic or traditional logic. In the case of fuzzy logic, the value lies between 0 to 1. We are considering all the possible values which lies between 0 and 1. That, uh, sub, uh, I have already shown you example of rows, which is red. I'll give you the membership value as 1. But for the white rows and yellow rows, I give the membership value as 0. But in the case of the next example, I have shown you earlier, the rows is little bit white a little bit yellow, a little bit it has some um, red color, we can give some membership value which lies between 0 to 1. It, I, I can give 0 0.75 or 0.65 or 5.5 .5 or anything else. So we can give all the possible values, truth values for, for all the given elements in the interval 0 to 1. That is the beauty of fuzzy logic. 
Fuzzy logic was uh, introduced by L.A. Zade in 1964. Uh, L.A. Zade and Yuji Buckley introduced the paper on Kalti sets. Idea of grade of membership was born in 1964. During 1965 to 1975, Zadi continued to broaden the foundation of fuzzy set theory. He studied about fuzzy multi-stage decision making, fuzzy similarity relations, fuzzy restrictions, linguistic edges, and all. In 1970s, research groups were formed in Japan. In 1974, Mamtani, United Kingdom, developed the first fuzzy logic controller. In 1977, Dubai applied fuzzy sets in a study of traffic controllers. In 1976 to 1987, industrial application of fuzzy logic in Japan and Europe developed. From 1987 to present, fuzzy boom. Now let us see the traditional representation of fuzzy logic. Uh, here, slow. Slow, the value I, I just gave zero, speed zero. For fast, we give the value as one, speed is equal one. For every problem, must represent in terms of fuzzy set. Here we have considered many situations. Fast, slowest, slow, fast, fastest, right? For slow, uh, for slowest, we are giving the value zero to 0 0.25. For slow, we are giving the value 0 0.25 to 0.5. For fast, we are giving the value 0 0.5 to 0 0.75. For fastest, we are giving the maximum value that is 0 0.75 to 1. So what are fuzzy sets? We should know um, how will you define a fuzzy set. The next, next slide will see that. Fuzzy terms, I already told you fuzzy is nothing but imprecise or uncertain in nature. The, the following terms are called fuzzy terms. That is expensive, young, old. Rare, dangerous, good, many, few, almost, usually. So these are all some fuzzy terms which are used in our day-to-day -day life. Propositions containing fuzzy terms are fuzzy propositions or fuzzy expressions. They can have its truth value in the interval 0, 0,1. Now suppose we are considering one example that is, is it is expensive? This mobile is more expensive. Um, this fellow is very young. So we can use the linguistic terms that is expansive, young, and all that, or all are fuzzy terms. Sometimes we may say the climate is very cold, uh, the climate is uh, beautiful, like that, right? For this linguistic terms, we can use fuzzy logic. So properties of fuzzy logic operators, involution, commutative, associative, absorption, identity, the Morgan's laws gold good for fuzzy operators. Law of contradiction and law of excluded middle are not, is not satisfied in fuzzy logic. In classical logic, law of contradiction and law of excluded middle are satisfied. But in the case of fuzzy logic, it is not satisfied. There is only drawback here. Now let me explain you what is the difference between the crisp set or classical set with the fuzzy set. And I'll give you some practical applications of day-to-day -day life in a fuzzy logic by using fuzzy logic. Classical set. Classical set is nothing but the set of well-defined objects are called set. The objects in a set are called elements or members of a set. Well-defined objects. So what do you mean by the term well-defined? How well that element is defined? How much that element belong to that set? That is the uh, main thing of classical set. Here, we are characterized the classical set by means of a membership function or characteristic function. For this, I'm explaining it here. A set A is a subset of U can be established by the concept of characteristic function or membership function mu A of X, taking only two values, one and zero, indicating whether or not X belongs to U is a member of A. Suppose that element belong, belongs to the set means we say the membership value is one. Otherwise, we say the membership value is zero. Uh, here we can consider either do or die. We are usually we used to say to our students, Either do or die, right? So the value is, and the element belong to the set means you give the membership value as one if x belongs to a. Otherwise, if x does not belong to a, you simply put the membership value as zero. But in the case of classical set, you are assigning one, only two values, either one or zero. What about the terms which lies between zero and one? We are not considering that elements, the degree of membership to that set. 
these are all the drawbacks of classical set or physical set. The collection of element objects are only we are considering, but how well they are defined in the set, set we are not considering here. That is the drawback of classical set or physical set. That fuzzy comes. So fuzzy set satisfies the conditions given here. So what do you mean by a fuzzy set? A fuzzy set is simply noted as a tilde, and is given by a tilde equal to collection of all x comma mu a of x such that x belongs to a and mu a of x belongs to the closed interval zero comma one. Here in the ordered pair x comma mu a of x, the first element x belongs to the classical set A. I already told you a classical set is a collection of well-defined objects. How well it is defined in the set is not specified in classical set. But in the case of fuzzy set, I can easily say x together with mu a of x. That is how much that element belongs to that set. I can also give the um, degree of membership to that particular set. That is, I can denote a fuzzy set by means of ordered pair x comma mu a of x. The first element x represents the element in classical set A, and the second element mu a of x represents the closed interval belong to the closed interval zero comma one. From the value zero comma one, um, values between zero comma one, we can easily say that but that element, how much that element belongs to that set A. Yeah. Suppose I'll give um, x comma one means the full full membership in that set. That element x belong to the set is full membership value. Suppose I'm putting y comma zero means that y that element y is a zero membership value. So it, it has zero membership value in that particular fuzzy set. In the case of um, z comma zero point five means it partially belongs to the fuzzy set and partially belongs to the classical set. But only set, right? So we can see it can be said the fuzziness here is point five. So in the in the case of fuzzy set, we can give all possible values between zero and one for the membership function, right? The fuzzy set can also be represented as a tilde equal to mu a of x by x. X belongs to a and mu a of x belongs to the closed interval zero comma one. Here the symbol slash not is a division symbol. But it indicates the top number mu a of x is the membership value and x is the element in the bottom. I hope we can understand the difference between the fuzzy set and the classical set. In the case of classical set, we are considering only the elements, but how much that elements belong to the set is not given in classical set. But in the case of fuzzy set, we can easily define an element together with its membership value. How much that element belong to the set can also be defined in the case of fuzzy set. That that's why it, um, it addresses many problems in our social problems and real life problems in our day-to-day -day life. Next, I wish to tell you alpha cut. An alpha cut of a fuzzy set contains all the elements of the inverse set X that have an, um, a value greater than or equal to a specified value alpha. That is A equal to collection of all X is an element of X, capital X, which is mu of X is greater than or equal to alpha. Strong alpha cut means Collection of all x belongs to A such that mu of x is greater than alpha. An alpha cut is a crisp set that contains all, all the elements of a fuzzy set membership functions have values greater than a specified val value alpha. Fuzzy number. So next I wish to tell you what is meant by fuzzy number. A fuzzy subset A of a real line R with membership function mu A from R to close to 0, 0, 0,1 is called a fuzzy number. A is normal, that is, there exists an element x0 belongs to A such that mu A of x0 is equal to 1 and A is fuzzy convex and it satisfies this condition and mu A, mu A is upper semi-continuous and support of A is bounded by support A is it's a collection of all x belongs to R such that mu A of x is greater than 0. So I told you what is meant by crisp set or classical set, what is a fuzzy set and what is meant by alpha cut and what fuzzy number. Now let us see some types of fuzzy numbers which are applied in fuzzy mathematics. Triangular fuzzy number. Usually, it's the simplest number in uh, fuzzy number. There is a triangular fuzzy number, A tilde is a fuzzy number, fully specified by three triples, A1, A2, A3, such that A1 is less than or equal to A2, less than or equal to A2, less than or equal to A3, with membership function defined as mu A tilde of X is equal to zero if X less than or equal to A1, and if x lies between a1 and a2, the function is defined as x minus a1 by a2 minus a1. And x minus a3 by a2 minus a3, if x lies between a2 and a3, 0 if x greater than or equal to a3. This triangular fuzzy number can be dia uh, diagrammatically represented as follows, uh, which is given in this diagram here. Next, let us see trapezoidal fuzzy number. 
A trapezoidal fussy number A tilde is a fussy number which is fully specified by four triples instead of three number members. Here we are considering four members that is A1, A2, A3, A4. So it's that. A1 is less than or equal to A2, less than or equal to A3, less than or equal to A4 with membership function defined as mu A tilde of X is equal to X minus A1 by A2 minus A1 if X lies between A1 and A2. 1 if X lies between A2 and A3 and x minus a4 by a3 minus a4 if x is between a3 and a4 and 0 otherwise. This can be diagrammatically represented as in this sphere. Actually, for the triangle fuzzy number, we are having one, one fixed value that is um, peak value is 1 in only one point. But in the case of trapezoidal fuzzy number, we are having the freedom of 1 in between a2 and a3. Now let us see the arithmetic operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division in our ordinary arithmetic operations in algebra. Here we are considering arithmetic operations in fuzzy numbers. Arithmetic operations in fuzzy numbers, um, I have considered here the function principle based on function principle um, given by Zen and Z, Z here. Consider two fuzzy numbers A tilde and B tilde. A tilde is represented as A1, A2, A3 and B tilde is represented as B1 and B2, B3. Addition of A tilde and B tilde a tilde plus b tilde is equal to a1, a2, a3 plus b1, b2, b3, which can be represented as a1 plus b1, a2 plus b2, and a3 plus b3, where a1, a2, a3, b1, b2, b3 are all real numbers. Multiplication of a, a tilde and b tilde, uh, suppose we are having all the elements are positive real numbers, we can simply write a1, a2, a3 start b1, b2, b3 is equal to a1, b1, a2, b2, a3, b3. Otherwise, we, can, we have to go for maximum elements. And uh, next, the negative scalar multiplication, that is by minus 1, we are multiplying the b tilde by minus 1. We are getting minus b3, minus b2, minus b1. So these are all the operations in arithmetic operations in triangular fuzzy number. Let us see some more triangular fuzzy number operations. That is subtraction a tilde minus b tilde, which can be given as a1, a2, a3, minus b1, b2, b3 is a1 minus b3, a2 minus b2, a3 minus b1, where a1, a2, a3, b1, b2, b3 are all real numbers. Now we go for the division 1 by b tilde, which can be represented as b tilde inverse, which is given as 1 by b1, 1 by b1, 1 by b3, 1 by b2, 1 by b1, where all b1, b2, b3 are non-zero positive numbers. Division of a tilde by b and b tilde is given as a1, a2, a3, it's a b1, b2, b3, which is given as a1 by b3, a2 by b2, a3 by b1. Here a tilde and b tilde are non-zero non positive real numbers. For any scalar multiplication k, suppose k is positive, the multiplication is k tilde equal to ka1, ka2, ka3. For negative, k is negative, suppose the scalar is negative, ka1, ka2, ka3 can be written as ka3, ka2, ka1. The order is reversed. Arithmetic operations, similarly, we can define the arithmetic operations on trapezoidal fuzzy numbers. Uh, here we are considering a tilde, a1, a2, a3, a4, b tilde, b1, b2, b3, a4. Um, addition of a tilde and b tilde is given here, multiplication is given here. Like uh, triangular fuzzy numbers, we can define um, for the trapezoidal fuzzy numbers also. Minus b tilde is here, a tilde minus b tilde, 1 by b tilde, and division of a tilde by b tilde, and k a tilde. Um, here, k is positive means k a1, k a2, k a3, k a4. If k is negative means we are considering k a4, k a3, k a2, and k a1. Next, let me introduce interval fuzzy numbers. Interval numbers. If a tilde is a triangular fuzzy number, then the alpha cut a alpha tilde is given by a alpha minus and a alpha plus with a closed interval. Here, a alpha minus and a alpha plus are its left and right ends respectively. Let us consider two interval numbers i and j, which are defined by the ordered pairs a closed interval i equal to a closed interval a comma b and j equal to closed interval c comma d, where a is less than or equal to b and c is less than or equal to d. Suppose a is equal to b and c equal to d means these numbers degenerate into a scalar real number. Arithmetic operations on interval numbers, addition i plus j, that is closed interval a comma b plus closed interval c comma d is equal to a plus c comma b plus d. Here a, b, c and d are any real numbers. Subtraction i minus j, that is closed interval a comma b minus c comma d, which can be um, given as a minus d, b minus c. By scalar multiplication, that lambda belongs to all, then lambda into closed interval a comma b is lambda a, lambda b for lambda greater than or equal to zero, and lambda b, lambda a for lambda less than zero. 
multiplication is defined as closed interval a comma b into c comma d is minimum of a c a d b c b d and maximum of a c a d b c a d. Our division also we can define that. Next, let us see the falsification. The conversion of a fuzzy set or a fuzzy number into a single crystal value is called the falsification and, and is called the reverse process of falsification. Many methods are available for the falsification. Uh, here I, I consider few methods, centroid method, center of sums method, uh, mean of maximum method, graded mean integration method. In my research, I have tried graded mean integration method, which is somewhat uh, um, easy and user friendly to work out with fuzzy numbers. Now let us see what is meant by multi-objective fuzzy linear programming problem. So what is the need of multi-objectivity and fuzziness? So, so far I have discussed about what is meant by classical set or fiscal set and what is meant by a fuzzy set and fuzzy, what, is, what, what do you mean by fuzzy number and some types of fuzzy numbers and some arithmetical operations on fuzzy numbers and defuzzification methods. Now let us see some practical applications of fuzziness in our real life situation. So here I have considered linear programming problem. You may all mathematics people, you definitely know linear programming problem. Um, you may consider a single objective linear programming problem in your day-to-day -day life. But in here, I have considered multi-objective fuzzy linear programming problem. The single objective decision-making problems reflect an early and simpler era. As we enter into the information age, we find that almost every important real-life problem involves more than one objective. Suppose I'm a owner of a company and producing some products. I want to go for more than one objective. It may be minimizing the cost of my product, or I have to maximize the profit of my product. Right. So more than one objective is very simple and very. Um, in our day, day to day life, you are having that uh, problem, right? So more than one objective is very important. In conventional mathematical programming, the coefficients of problems are assumed to be deterministic and fixed value. But there are situations where this assumption is not valid because of uncertain environment. Most of the real life problems exhibit properties of multi-objectivity and fuzziness in nature. Furthermore, it has become essential to study the multi-objectivity problems in fuzzy environment. Thus, the decision-making methods under uncertainty or needed. So here I have considered a multi-objective linear programming problem in which I have considered the fuzzy coefficients and fuzzy numbers and fuzzy environment to solve the problem. The linear multi-objective problem can be stated as minimize C1x, C2x, etc. Cnx subject to Ax is not equal to B, where Cj of x J varying from 1 to n is a n vector of cost coefficients. A an m by n coefficient matrix of constraint and B an m vector of demand or resource availability. It is supposed that the coefficients in the objective function and constraints are given by fuzzy numbers. Then the corresponding model can be defined as minimized C1 fx, C2 fx, etc. Cn fx subject to A fx less than or equal to Bf, x greater than or equal to 0, where each Tj f J varying from 1 to n is an n vector of fuzzy numbers. A f and m by n matrix of fuzzy numbers, B f and m vector of fuzzy numbers, and the symbol is not equal to f standing for a fuzzy relation, ranking fuzzy numbers. So here we have considered a linear multi-objective programming problem in which the coefficients are fuzzy numbers. Now let us see an algorithm to solve a multi-objective fuzzy linear programming problem using failure series. Here, we are considering a multi-objective linear programming problem in step one, minimize each objective function in z i of x subject to a given set of constraints using fuzzy simplex algorithm. Determine xi star, xi1, my xi1 i2 star, et cetera, i n star, which is used to maximize the i membership function mu i of x associated with i subjective z i of x, i varying from 1 to k, where n is the number of variables. Suppose I'm considering a multi-objective linear programming problem in which I have more number of objective functions. I may have two objective functions or three objective functions or n number of objective functions, but I'm having a list of few constraints only. So I have to optimize all the objective functions simultaneously. So instead of um, optimizing one by one, objective function with respect to the given constraints. By using Taylor series approach, I'm going to convert the 
multi objective optimization problem into a single objective optimization problem which can be solved by any of the existing methods available in a, in our mathematics so step 3 stands on the membership function by using first order taylor polynomial series that is you are we may all know taylor polynomial series that is mu i of x equal to mu i of x i star plus x1 minus x i1 star do mu i of x i star by do x1 plus x2 minus x i2 star do mu i of x i star by do x2 plus x star x n minus x i n star do mu i of do x x i star by do x n here we are considering n variables um here is it is a function of more than one variable so we have to go for partial differentiation but in the case of taylor uh, series approach we are considering a, a single variable you are using uh, that you use u d d y by d x d square by d x square like that here we are considering do by do do x do by do x 2 do by do x etc here we are considering n variables that's why we are going for partial differentiation and then step 4 obtain the satisfactory solution x star that is x1 star x2 star etc x n star by solving the red problem And it is to do a single objective that is p of x equal to sigma i equal to one to k mu i of x i star plus sigma j varying from one to n x j minus x i j star do mu i of x i star by do x j. The multi-objective fast linear programming problem is reduced to a single simple mathematical model as follows: that is minimize sigma i varying from one to k. mu i of x star x i star plus j sigma j varying from 1 to n x j minus x i j star do mu i of x i star by do x j subject to the constraints x belongs to capital x and x greater than or equal to 0 here the membership function is given as in two ways using upper tolerance limits and lower tolerance limits that is one if z of x is greater than or equal to gi and z of x minus ti lower bar by gi minus ti lower bar if ti bar less than or equal to z of x less than or equal to gi zero if z of x is less than or equal to ti lower bar the ti lower bar denotes the lower tolerance limit here we are using upper tolerance limit ti upper bar that is upper tolerance limit gi is known as the goals of this particular objective function or constraint now let us explain this algorithm and its application by means of a real life application actually we have done this project in Virginia district. Um, the situation takes place in the Virginia district, Tamil Nadu, India, where the people are made made as slaves and more than bonded laborers in pirate industry, and they would pay away their livelihood and shelter. Actually, affects their social economic, especially the lives of women. Usually, women wake up early in the morning and do all the household duties. Both men and women are the firework industry. Men work. For twelve hours from seven a.m. to seven p.m. and women work for ten hours from eight a.m. to six p.m. The daily average wages come around rupees one twenty and rupees hundred respectively. Uh, this data is taken during two thousand nine. Now the wages may be, may vary, so don't uh, mistake me. Uh, workplace. The children regularly go to schools at least for having lunch there. Moreover, they are getting free education in schools, but they go to the fire industries on holidays or doing the same work. given by the managers of the industry at home itself daily in the evenings after returning schools for having economic independence or by the compulsory of parents most men are alcoholics smokers and addicts bad habits addicts they spend at least rupees 40 towards these expenses and unfortunately women are also addicts to tobacco porn items etc and they spend at least rupees 30 for having these things Usually, men spend rupees sixty for food, and women spend rupees forty. After completing one year of service in a particular industry, a family is given a loan of one lakh rupees. As soon as they get this loan, they become bonded laborers of particular industry. They have to repay the loan in a daily basis. Women by at least rupees sixty. Their lives are uncertain, pathetic, and miserable. I belong to that village um, in Vijayanagar district, and uh, I have seen the people. Directly, and I have collected the data from them. The economic aspect of the whole study is formulated as a fuzzy multi-objective linear programming problem in such a way that the savings of a family has to be maximized by the way of doing minimum overtime work in addition to the amount spent on food, debts, and bad habits, and is formulated as below. So the whole situation in the firework industry and the people' uh, economic life is formulated as a multi-objective linear programming problem here. 
here the first objective is maximize z1 of x equal to 2x1 plus 2x2. Uh, here we have to maximize the savings of the people. Minimize z2 of x, that is 5x1 plus 4x2, overtime work. They have to reduce the overtime work to um, in spite of their health, health condition. Subject to the constraints, x1 plus x2 less than or equal to 11. It represents the food. Day. The second one is x2 greater than or equal to 6. They got loan from the managers and uh, industry is. So they have to repay for the loan. So x2 is greater than or equal to 6. The amount is represented in terms of hundreds. And a 4x1 plus 3x2 is greater than or equal to 20. They have spent money for bad habits and uh, for pawn items um, and other things. They have they spend the money. Here, all the variables x1, x2 involved in this particular problem are positive, greater than or equal to zero. If the aspiration level for this example are 22 and 27 respectively, we have to um, form the following fuzzy goals. That is, z1 of x is equal to 2x1 plus 2x2, greater than or equal to 22. And z2 of x is 5x1 plus 5, 4x2, less than or equal to 27. Subject to the constraints, x1 plus x2, less than or equal to 11, x2, greater than or equal to 6, 4x1 plus 3x2, greater than or equal to 20, and x1, x2, greater than or equal to 0. The tolerant limits of the fuzzy two fuzzy objectives are 0 and 500 respectively. Here we have considered two objectives. The first objective is maximizing the um, they are uh, maximizing the savings. Second one is minimizing the overtime work. Subject to the given set of constraints, we have to solve this problem by using the Taylor series approach. The membership function for this particular problem is given like this, like this one, if z of x is greater than 2x1 plus 2x2 by 22 minus 0, if z of x has rise between 0 and 22, and z of x is greater than equal to 0, the corresponding value is 0. Here, mu2 of x is defined as 1, if z2 of x is greater than equal to 27, 500 minus 5x1 plus 4x2 by 500 minus 27, if z2 of x is between 27 to 500, if z2 of x is greater than equal to 500, the corresponding value is 0. So by applying the algorithm given here, we have solved this particular problem and the membership values are mu1 star of 0, 11 and mu2 star of 0.56 are obtained. Then the membership functions are transformed by using first order Taylor polynomial series as per step three of this given algorithm. We may get the function as mu1 of x equal this one and mu2 of x equal this one. Adding these two functions, we may get the single objective linear program, multi-objective linear programming problem, which is defined as P of x is equal to mu1 of x plus mu2 of x, which is 0.9451 plus 0.1015x1 plus 0.0994x2. By using the existing softwares, and we can solve this problem with respect to the given concept. So, Valky objective first linear programming problem is converted into a linear a single objective linear programming problem with respect to the given concept. The problem is solved by the usual uh, mathematical packages. I have used here Flora package to get the solution. X1 equal to 5 and X2 equal to 6. And Z1 of X is 22. And Z2 of X equal to 49. And the membership values are mu1 is 0.9535 and mu2 is equal to 1. That is the first objective satisfied at 95%, 100%. Z2 satisfied. The first objective satisfied at 100% and second objective satisfied at 95%. So with the solution x1 equal 5 and x2 equal to 6. So the uh, solution is a very good solution for that particular problem. And we have given a solution to the firework industry people. Next, I wish to tell you something about induction stick fuzzy set. In the case of fuzzy sets, we are talking about only uh, membership function value only. Here, we are going to talk about membership function as well as non-membership value. Suppose a, a particular person is member in particular set, but he's not a member of other set. Or he may be non-member to that particular set also, right? So here we have to consider both the cases, membership and non-membership. Um, given a fixed set X, X1, X2, X3, X10, an induction sig fuzzy set is defined as A to the I, Xi, mu A of Xi, mu A of Xi, such that Xi belongs to X which assigns to each element Xi, a membership degree, mu A, I of xi and a non membership degree mu a i of xi under the condition 0 less than or equal to mu a of xi <coughs> plus mu a of xi less than or equal to 1 for all xi belongs to capital X. So, in the case of fuzzy set, we are dealing with only element x and mu a of x element and membership value. 
But in the case of intuition sequences, you are dealing with three elements. One is the x, that element. Mu of x is membership value. Mu a of x is the non-membership value. But the total of membership and non-membership should lies between zero and one. In the case of fuzzy set, we are considering alpha set only. But in the case of intuition sequence set, we have to consider alpha, beta, cat. Alpha cat for membership, beta cat for non-membership. Let us see some types of intuition sequence number. Triangle intuition sequence number is defined here. Here the membership function is given like this and non-membership function is given like this. Um, the diagrammatic representation of triangle indistance in fuzzy number is given here. Uh, this is membership and this one is non-membership. Similarly, we can define trapezoidal induction in fuzzy number. It can be given in four triplex. Uh, first to four represents a membership. Next to four elements represents a non-membership value. This is membership function. This is non-membership function. The diagrammatic representation of trapezoidal induction stick fuzzy number. So this is symmetric trapezoidal fuzzy number, which can be represented like this. Pentagonal induction stick fuzzy number, and its representation is given is here. It is represented by five elements, A, B, C, D, E. A of X membership value, new A of X non-membership value. This one is hexagonal induction state fuzzy number, which can be represented like this. Um, here the elements are A, B, C, D, E, F, six elements. And new A of X is the membership value, new A of X is the non-membership value. Now, let me explain the concept of Taylor series approach to induction state fuzzy set here. Due to time restriction, I have talked up to this. We also developed some more uh, sets in neutroscopic fuzzy sets also. Induction stick must be multiple linear programming problem using Taylor series approach. Uh, here also we have developed an algorithm based on a multiple linear programming problem. Here we have to consider two functions. Uh, one is membership function, another one is non-membership function. That is mu i of x for uh, lower tolerance limits mu a of x for upper tolerance limits, here new a of new i of x for lower tolerance limits and for upper tolerance limits. A same algorithm, I have already defined you the algorithm for multi-objective linear programming problem. Here we have extended to multi-objective induction stick fuzzy linear programming problem. Um, the same thing is first we have to solve this function with respect to the membership function and as well as for non-membership function. And we have to transform the membership and non-membership function using Taylor polynomial series. And we have to find the satisfactory solution. And a single objective linear programming problem is created here. Here, P of X represents the membership function related with the single objective linear programming problem. And Q of X represents the non-membership function value of the given multi-objective linear programming problem. Here we have considered an example that is 2x1 plus x2 is does not equal to 6. x1, uh, that is maximize that equal to x1 plus x2. Subject that. Is there 2 equal to 3x1 plus? three x 2x2. And then subject to the constraints, 2x1 plus x2 is not equal to 6. x1 plus 4x2 is not equal to 12. Um, here the membership and non-membership functions are taken as triangular fuzzy numbers with these scalar parameters, a1, b1, c1. And Z1 depends on the three scalar parameters, 2, 3.5, 5. And Z2 depends on three scalar parameters, that is minus 0 0.01, 9, and 18. The membership and non-membership function values are obtained as follows. Uh, here, this function is given like this. And we have selected the membership value and non-membership value from the first order Taylor series. So using the above algorithm and uh, simplifying this function, we are getting mu1 of x mu1 i of x and mu2 i of x. Adding these two functions, we are getting p of x. The objective of the first multi-objective linear programming problem is obtained by adding equations one and two. That is p of x subject to the given set of constraints. And we solve this problem and we obtain the solution as x1 equal to three and x2 equal to zero. z1 of x equal to three and z2 of x equal to nine. And membership values are mu1 equal to 0 0.67, mu2 equal to one. 
the membership function value shows that both goals Z1 and Z2 are satisfied with 67 percentage and 100 percentage respectively for the obtained solution, which is X1 equal to 3 and X3 equal to 0. Similarly, we can find the non membership function of the goals nu1 of i of x and nu2 of i of x. Uh, here we have obtained two functions v1 i of x and nu2 i of x. Adding these two functions, we are getting q of x, that is x1 minus 0.889x2 plus 1.575 subject to the given constraint. The problem is solved and the solution is as follows that is x1 equal to 3 x2 equal to 0, z1 of x is 3, z2 of x, x equal to 9. The non-membership values are mu1 equal to 0 0.33 and mu2 equal to 0. The non-membership function value shows that both goals z1 and z2 are satisfied with 33 percentage and 0 percentage respectively for the obtained solution x1 equal to 3 and x equal to 0. Um, here the beauty is for the membership function, we have obtained the solution as 100% and 67%. But for non-membership function, the obtained value, goal, value is 33% and 0%. When we add this 67% and 33%, you get 100%. When we add 100% and 0%, we'll get the exact value as 100%. So the both the functions satisfy Z1, both goals Z1 and Z2 are satisfied with 33% and 0% respectively for the uptime solution, which is 3. Uh, x1 equal to 3 and x, x equal to x2 equal to 0. So, so far I have discussed about the CRISP sets. What is the difference between the classical set, fuzzy set and induction stick fuzzy set? So in the case of classical set, we are dealing with only the elements. How much that elements belong to the set, we, do, we don't know. But in the case of fuzzy set, we are, we are dealing with the elements, the ordered pair, ordered pair of elements. The first element x comma mu a of x in which x represents the element of that belongs to the set and mu of x is the corresponding membership value, how much that element belongs to the set in the case of a set. But in the case of induction seek first set, we are dealing with three elements that is x, mu a of x and mu a of x, that is the element belong to the set x, <coughs> which is membership as well as non-membership. So how we apply this membership value and non-membership value in, in our day-to-day -day life and I have explained everything here. I hope you may understand the concepts of fuzzy sets and the related things very clearly. If you have any doubts, you can ask me. So these are all the references we have made. Thank you for your patience, Isani. Any queries? I request our participants to raise your hand. We will unmute you. Uh, yes, sir. You can uh, raise your hand. Uh, questions. Hello. Hello. The yeah. main name mentioned in PP. Yes. Raise your hands. My.
Thank you, ma'am. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am, for your wonderful session. Now we are in end of the session. It's time for word of thanks. I take this opportunity to thank our management, chairman sir, vice chairman, advisor sir, and MD sir for giving all the support to conduct the webinar. I thank our principal sir, vice principal madam, and the dean of academics sir for their guidance and the support. I thank our chief guest, Dr. R. Irene Kepsiba, assistant professor of mathematics, PPML College, Korea, for giving a wonderful presentation. I thank all the staff members of RC Engineering College for their continuous support. I thank all the participants who attended this webinar from all over the world. I thank our department staff, technical staff, and every individual who worked hard to make this webinar a grand success one. Once again, I thank you to all. The feedback link can be sent to the WhatsApp group. You may fill, the, fill out the form to get the, your certificates. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am.